me the science guy. Chris, me the science guy. Chris, 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 me the science guy. Science rules. Chris, me the science guy. Inertia is a property of matter. Chris, 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 me the science guy. Chris, 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 Chris. Brought to you by Air. Without Air, you ain't flying. Musiał jakiś podmuch wiatru. Proszę, ratował się ty. Mina trenera. Ski jumping. Ski jumping. Ski jump. Ski jumping is a sport originating from Norway. The first known ski jumper was Olaf Rai, a Norwegian lieutenant. In 1809, he literally launched himself off a cliff. And the jump was only about 9.5 meters, which isn't all that impressive compared to our current standards. Still, the sport became more known, and by 1862, the jumpers were tackling much larger jumps and landing much farther than ever. Like everything else in life, there is physics involved in ski jumping as well. Ski jumping requires a complex manipulation of forces, gravity, drag, and lift. Before we get into the details, let's take a look at a short clip of a Korean ski jumper. Let's get scientific. The mass of an average jumper, including his or her equipment, comes to about 60 to 65 kilograms. There are two types of jumping hills. One is the normal hill with a height of about 90 meters, and the other one is the large hill with 120 meters in height. The large hill has a length of 140 meters, and for this episode, we'll be taking a closer look at the large hill. So, now we know the mass and the height. With that, let's calculate the potential energy of a jumper at the top of the hill. Before we get into the calculations, let's take a look at the position versus time graph, and also the velocity versus time graph. Let's have some intense music. These graphs are based on a ski jumper coming down the in run. And for the position versus time graph, the reference is set to the bottom of the hill. And since the height of the hill is 120 meters, the initial height will be 120 meters. Okay, never mind. This graph shows the velocity of a jumper during an in-run. As you can see, the initial velocity is zero, and the final velocity is 25 meters per second, or 90 kilometers per hour. The slope of the graph is a straight line, which means that the ski jumper has a uniform acceleration. Let's turn to the whiteboard of science. We know that the potential energy is equal to mgh, right? And when we sub in the numbers, we get approximately 70,560 joules. This is also equal to 7.1 kilojoules. Since it's a closed system, the change in potential energy is equal to change in kinetic energy. And also, the change in kinetic energy is equal to work. Ski jumpers usually reach a speed of a whooping 90 km per hour or 25 meters per second at the bottom of the hill. Let's figure out how long they take to come down that hill. And when we plug in the numbers, we get approximately 5.3 seconds. So how powerful are these skiers anyways? Power by definition, whoops is work over time so plug and chug and we get approximately 1300 watts we can also find out their momentum at the bottom of the hill p equals mv notice that the p is small in this case because it represents momentum not power and the answer comes to approximately 1500 newton seconds this is equal to a 15 kilogram bowling ball moving at a near supersonic speed of 333 meters per second. Not bad, huh?
During a jump, a ski jumper must put his body in two completely different positions. One for coming down the ramp, and one for gliding through the air. When he's coming down the ramp, or the in ramp, the air around him creates resistance, called drag, and he wants to minimize the drag as much as possible. So he will streamline his posture. This involves the chest parallel to the snow, with the head down, and the arms back. But after the lead, they want lift. Lift occurs when there are differences in air pressure. Air pressure! So, in this case, the air behind him has less pressure than the air in front of him. This means that the air going under the ski jumper is a little bit slower than the air going on top. Now, when the air is moving this way, it pushes this way. It doesn't push so much up or down. So, there's a little bit more pressure under the jumper than on the top. And the difference in air pressure creates lift. This thing that happens with air, when it's moving this way, it pushes this way, and not so much sideways, is named after a Swiss guy called Bernoulli. And so, this is called the Bernoulli effect. The Bernoulli effect! The lift that the ski jumper gets is more like the lift your hand would get if you held it out the window of your car you would feel a very strong push of the air that will force your arm upward. Now, during the flight, you'll notice that he has his skis in a V-shape. This style is called, well, the V-style. This formation wasn't actually developed until the early 90s. When you see videos of old school ski jumping, they often have their skis parallel, and it was considered stylish back then. But later on, people realized that having your skis in a V-shape improved their distances by 10%. Okay, gotta go. Chris me the science guy. Chris me the science guy. Chris, 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 Chris. Chris me the science guy. Science rules. Inertia is a property of matter. Chris, 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 Chris,